live events. Everything from concerts to sporting events, conventions, business meetings, theatrical performances, festivals, and even weddings. The live events industry is estimated to produce $1.1 trillion in revenue worldwide, 36% of which is in the U.S. alone. Supporting over 12 million jobs and freelancers in the U.S., these figures were expected to double to more than $2 trillion over the next six years. And then this happened. Austin, Texas, and we've been running yeah. the banners here, has announced that the South by Southwest Music and Entertainment Festival yeah. has officially been canceled. The latest major event of Be Next uh, due to the fears. Well, another event has been called off here in Las Vegas over coronavirus concerns. Adobe says it is canceling this year's summit. It is the largest convention center in the Western Hemisphere, and it is dead, even though normally they would be setting up for the International Housewares show that was supposed to get underway at the end of the week. That's been canceled. A cardiologist convention that was supposed to follow, that has been canceled. Well, now the entertainment industry is being hit with concert cancellations in many parts of the world. Festivals like Coachella are even possibly being postponed to a later date. The NCAA tournament has been canceled. Google has canceled a major gathering, including the annual Google I.O. conference. This after it was announced that all Broadway theaters would be shut down until April 12th, as New York tries to contain the novel coronavirus. You've been here for how many years? I've been here for 30 years. This is my show. You know, rodeo is my life. I live on this money my whole year. I have 12 employees who depend on this for their income. And all the other vendors who are my family who've been here for longer than me or less than me, we invest everything we have in this. So starting in February, uh, while the rest of the U.S. was still chugging along, we started to see cancellations, uh, mostly events in Asia, concert tours in Europe. But then here in the U.S., over the course of a week or two, events started canceling left and right. Before the stock market crash and before any stay-at-home orders were made, uh, and before COVID was even a household name, all of our revenue just disappeared. Uh, happening this year, uh, even before the unemployment stats came out, uh, we already started to see some dominoes start to fall. But as this thing really ramped up over the last five weeks, it's, uh, it's almost like uh, you're going to the airport to catch a flight, but there's a huge storm that comes in and you, you look up at the indicator board with all the flights and one by one they, they start canceling and canceling and canceling until the entire board is canceled. Yeah. Companies like ours were already having to lay off 50% and more of their regular workers. And our freelancers were all at home with no work on the horizon. We were the first industry to completely shut down. We'll probably be the last industry to start back up. Even after the economy opens up, it's gonna be a while till people are allowed to, or even comfortable, to gather at large events. Hi, I'm Richard Dunn, and I'm a lighting designer for live events and entertainment. But as of this last month, I've become very familiar with UI, PUA, EIDL, SBA, PPP, mortgage forbearance, potential loan forgiveness, and all of those other relief terms. Our industry is made up of 1099s, corporations, S-Corp, sole proprietors, W-2, freelancers, full-time, contract, seasonal, and others. Our tax returns don't look like yours, and we don't fit the molds of these programs. I happen to be in New York City doing the Allman Brothers 50th anniversary show at Madison Square Garden in the beginning of March. Five or six days later, I got a phone call from the doctor letting me know I had tested positive for COVID-19. It came just in time as I was, that was the day I was due to go help my parents move, so I'm glad I wasn't around them while I was positive. I am an audio technician and audio IT specialist. I've currently been furloughed because of the COVID-19 epidemic. My name's Paul Bosky. I'm an event producer, but I'm not producing events for my own clients. I'm jumping in to stage manage, do talent buying, and I also DJ on the side as well. Hi, my name is Melanie Frederick and I'm a tour caterer in the touring industry. I've worked in the touring industry for going on 13 years now. Uh, as of March 8th, my band had to cancel their tour 
and so I don't know when I will be going back to work. It doesn't look good right now from the news. Now I find myself in a situation where I'm battling my home state of Georgia and my employer's state of Tennessee because neither of them want to pay me any unemployment. They see everybody sends me to the next guy. But of course I can't get in touch with anyone because the system is so overwhelmed right now. We won't be back to work in weeks. It will be months, if not over a year from now. And because of that, my family has had to go on COBRA, which as it goes, if it continues, or if the company decides to let me go past that, I will not be able to afford health insurance. So I'm finally at the point where I've got the right network, the right connections, and I'm getting the right offers in. And of course that's all dried up overnight, including my once a month DJ gig at a spin cycle class. I don't know what else to do right now other than just try and stay positive, uh, work around the house. Uh, I love spending time with my daughter and we're doing math lessons right now. She's two years old, almost three. So I, <laughs> thankfully I don't have a teenager alone at home. I can only imagine what that would be like. Even though we've been vigilant with our finances and we have savings, I figured that that should get us through about August. And after that, I would assume the selling of our modest retirement investments. And after that, I would assume borrowing against the house. And I'm not sure what comes after that. It's now my son has special needs. He has autism and he has to go to therapy sometimes up to five days a week. And with that, I cannot pay that out of pocket and I need the health insurance. My wife is also on medications that she cannot go without. So what am I having to do? Well, I'm moving at the end of May from New Orleans, my beloved city that I fell in love with, to Oregon to live in a place that my sister-in-law has available that I can live in until I can get back on my feet and figure out what I'm gonna do. Because at this moment, I can honestly say I don't know what programs will come through for us, if any. I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm trying to be understanding when I hear people say, we're in this together. So uh, it's really hurt. Uh, I'm not eligible for any kind of help for a number of reasons, financially. These jobs are essential to our living so that we can provide for our families. I hope we have options. I hope we're not going to be forgotten and I hope this lifeline is long. And I hope this lifeline is still available to us when the rest of the world returns to normal. And I think our relationships and how we come out of this really says who we are as people. You know, when you think about the 12 million people that are in the event industry today, 12 million people, that's, that's more than uh, telecom, uh, automobile manufacturing, food service, uh, oil and gas combined. Just in the US, 12 million people. And, but somehow we're still the redheaded stepchild that somehow gets lumped in under hospitality or under travel services. And we need to have our own voice. When you go to an event, yes, there is the star on the stage or the keynote speaker at the conference or the star athlete playing on the field. But for each of those people, there's another thousand or so working behind the scenes. The event planners, the security, the caterers, the audio, video, lighting technicians, the truck drivers who got the equipment to the event, the local stagehands who helped set everything up. Thousands. Over the years, whenever there was a tragedy or social cause that needed help, it was these people across the event industry who stepped up, front and center, putting on massive benefits to raise awareness and funds for those in need. After the SARS epidemic in 2003, the events community put on the Toronto Rocks Benefit, one of the largest such gatherings in history to help the hard-hit city of Toronto. Following the tragedy of 9-11, three major concerts across the country were televised to help support the first responders and victims. Then there were shows like Aid for Africa, various Earth Day events, Farm Aid, Band Aid, and Hope for Haiti, which alone raised $58 million for those devastated by the earthquake in 2010. But we are trying to aid our own as well. Several benefit funds 
have been set up to help event workers with organizations like Music Cares and Crew Nation. But are these funds going to be enough to cover the indefinite lost income for 12 million workers? More is needed. We need the federal government to understand the full scope and scale being faced by the live events industry. The CARES Act is a short-term solution to a long-term problem, a band-aid on a gaping wound. For the small businesses who were lucky enough to apply for the PPP program, many have still yet to receive funds. Additionally, this program is meant to only cover eight weeks. Our industry is looking at a shutdown of six months, if not more. We need to partner with our federal and state government and work to enact long-term unemployment benefits for the traditional 1099 worker. When the COVID crisis truly ramped up, the live event workforce was the very first industry that saw an immediate and complete loss of business. The live event industry will also be absolutely the last business back to work. We have to acknowledge these workers in this space and better protect them from any future crisis. We need help with health insurance for our furloughed employees and for our freelancers. We also need help in making up lost revenues that should be covered from event cancellations by insurance. And yet, many of our businesses and sole proprietors are still paying their full premiums. The government must allow 1099 gig workers the same employment benefits that W-2 workers are insured. Finally, we need a large billion dollar stabilization fund to help the thousands of live events companies and millions of workers stay afloat during this long-term shutdown. While the rest of the world economy gears up, it will be a long way away to recovery for the live events industry. Our industry is known to generate revenues for many other industries, including restaurants, hotels, and airlines. As a business owner, it was heart crushing to spend 17 years building a strong, reputable company where you treat employees really well and take care of them and to then have the rug pulled out without warning. We were lucky to get our PPP funding, enabling us to hire our furloughed employees back. But events aren't coming back. There is an entire industry so few are paying attention to. A trillion dollar industry made up of millions of workers and thousands of small businesses. Many businesses will not be around in another month as this crisis continues. And our workers who have zero income for this foreseeable future. 12 million who are normally a large part of the economy. We are the airline travelers. We are the hotel guests. We are the restaurant patrons. We are the truckers, the builders, the technicians, the security staff, the caterers, the planners. We are events.